after this, we will have a Q&A session for Nilini. This will be followed with a live demonstration of the Peptide MAM software by Dr. Barbara Sullivan. This will be followed by a Q&A session for uh, Barbara. Now, our first speaker is Dr. Nilini Rambaduke. Uh, Bobby, do you want to introduce Nilini? Yes, thank you, Gurmil. It's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Nilini Rambaduke. And Nalini is a senior scientist in the Scientific Operations Organization at Waters Corporation. Nalini provides support for a number of biopharmaceutical applications, including liquid chromatography coupled with mass spec, detection for proteins, peptides, and synthetic peptides. Her most recent projects include generating technical content for Waters Connect software platform and peptide MAM software. We'll turn it over to Nalini. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. I'm Nalini Ranbadige. I'm a senior scientist at Waters Corporation in the Scientific Operations Department. And the presentation I'm giving you today is about a project that I was very excited to work on. Um, and I've been working on this project for the past two years. During this time, I worked very closely with some of you in the industry to gather information and as well as um, I had the privilege of being the voice of you to the product development team to make sure that this streamlined um, LCMS based streamlined workflow method for peptide MAM addresses your needs. This is a brief overview of the presentation. At this point, we all know multi attribute method or as we all call it MAM needs no introduction. So I'll be more focused on discussing some of the challenges um, of MAM as well as deploying MAM in labs. More importantly, um, I would like to show you how we address these challenges using our um, systems and our informatics workflow. And this includes some of the experimental data I've collected um, during a few case studies um, using this end-to-end -end workflow method. And this also includes a data reporting feature. When we were working with um, some of you in the industry, um, one of the questions um, we heard a lot was um, about the robustness of the workflow method. Um, so last but not least, I would like to show you some of the data that I've collected on multiple systems using this workflow method to demonstrate the robustness of the system. In today's presentation, I have selected a monoclonal antibody molecule as an example. And um, one of the reasons for selecting a monoclonal antibody is that they are a very popular group of biotherapeutics and there is a very high demand for high quality monoclonal antibody drug products. Not only that, these monoclonal antibody molecules are susceptible to post-translational modifications. And some of these post-translational modifications are very well known. And these post-translational modifications could be anything from oxidation, a deamidation, a glycosylation, a C-terminal or N-terminal modification to an isomerization. Some post-translational modifications are harmless to the molecule, but there could be post-translational modifications that can affect the quality of the molecule, um, that can affect the potency or the efficacy or the safety of the molecule. And these are known as the quality attributes of the monoclonal antibody. And often these quality attributes are very, monitored, very closely monitored during the product life cycle using um, targeted monitoring techniques. Multi-attribute method is one of the popular analytical techniques that is currently being investigated or currently being used by most of the biopharmaceutical organizations. And this is an LCMS-based technique. It's a targeted quantification method uh, that tracks these um, modifications or product quality attributes and determines the percent abundance level. And if this assay is being used for purity assessment, then we perform new peak detection. During new peak detection, we compare the peaks in the analytical sample to a reference control to uh, determine any new emerging peaks or peaks that are changing um, in the analytical sample relative to our reference control. 
As I mentioned earlier, the product development was an ongoing process and we worked very closely with some of you in the industry to identify your needs um, in a streamlined workflow method for peptide MAM and it finally came down to three points. The first one was, um, can we operate these instrumentation and software platforms using existing personnel or do we need LCMS experts? Or it was about, do we need expensive training uh, to adopt these methods? The second was about um, meeting the robustness criteria because you expect to deploy these methods into different parts of the organizations or different stages of the production process. And some of these parts were in different geographical locations. So robustness criteria um, is a must. And some of the customers question about the compliance expectations because you work in regulated environments. So compliance expectations was a must have criteria for a streamlined workflow method. To address your needs for MAM, we introduced the BioCourt system with what is Connect platform for MAM here. And I've actually broke it down to two parts. The first part is the instrumentation. The second part is our inst informatics workflow. Under instrumentation, we have the BioCourt system. The BioCourt system is a smart MSLCMS system. It was first launched in early 2019. This has the auto tuning and calibration capability suitable for peptide analysis and it also provides you active instrument health checks. So if you ask me the question about um, needing extensive LCMS training or needing LCMS experts to operate this instrumentation, my answer would be no. Under informatics workflow, uh, I have listed Waters Connect informatics platform. This is an application based compliant ready software solution. It manages everything from um, data acquisition to reporting. For Peptide MAM streamlined workflow method, we've selected a few applications or few apps as we call it um, from this um, compliant ready platform. And this starts with um, acquisition method editor. So if you are someone working in method development, acquisition method editor is your um, application to um, do that uh, method optimization process. This is where you define your um, MS settings. This is where you write your LC gradients. Sample submission is there to acquire data and uh, you write your uh, injection lists in sample submission and then you use your optimum acquisition, opt pre-optimized pre acquisition methods to acquire the data. Scientific library is where we keep all the um, information about the um, peptide quality attribute lists. Peptide MAM application is there for MAM data processing. And if you are a user that needs manual investigation of um, chromatograms or mass spectra, we have LCMS toolkit to um, support you with that. To elaborate a little bit more on the smart MS features of this um, BioCourt system, I have the instrument front panel on the left hand side and I have the automated tune and calibration page of the software on the right hand side. So if you look at the front panel, you'll see that there are different color indicators, um, different labeling as well as different symbols to uh, let the user know about the current status of the instrument. If the instrument is ready and um, in working conditions, you will see the green light as well as the ready label on the front panel. On the right hand side, I have the auto tune and calibration page. So you can see that the calibration and tuning can be done for two polarities, positive and negative, as well as uh, different mass ranges. For peptide mapping analysis, I've actually um, used 50 to 2000 uh, master charge range. Um, however, um, when I calibrate the instrument, I often calibrate for um, all mass ranges and all polarities. That's mainly because um, this tuning and calibration is a one step process that needs minimum user intervention. The streamlined workflow method for peptide MAM actually starts with data acquisition. For data acquisition, we've used the BioCode system here. And the BioCode system addresses one of the biggest challenges um, of peptide analysis related to instrumentation, that is in source fragmentation or the source induced modifications. Now, as I mentioned earlier, 
the system provides auto-tune parameters and these auto-tune parameters coupled with the generic source settings that I've listed here, we managed to reduce the source-induced fragmentation of glycopeptides of Nismap Digest down to less than 1%. And we verified these results in uh, transduced map digest as well as in um, Infliximap map digest. Once we finish our data acquisition using the BioCourt system, the next step of the streamlined workflow method is data processing using Peptide MAM application. And this starts with a list of product quality attributes. And we import this list of product quality attributes from the scientific library. And scientific library is a feature that is found within the Waters Connect platform. And during peptide mapping analysis, we identify modifications of peptides and we identify our peptide quality attributes. Once we identify our peptide quality attributes, we store that information in the scientific library. So in a way, scientific library acts as a bridge between my peptide mapping analysis and my peptide MAM um, data processing. And I'm gonna use the next case study to elaborate this more. In this case study, I've used NISMAP digest. So the NISMAP protein was reduced, alkylated, and digested using trypsin. And we used Unify peptide mapping method in Waters Connect to generate this data shown in this example. We've mapped all the peptides, we've characterized the protein and identified the modified and unmodified peptides in the sample. And the example I've chosen here is the DTLM ISR peptide. I know we all call it the micer peptide. For micer peptide, we identified two forms. One is the oxidized micer peptide, and the other one is the unmodified micer peptide. The oxidation is actually coming from the methionine side. This methionine side is very susceptible to oxidation. This oxidized micer peptide eludes around 13 minutes, and the unmodified micer peptides um, eludes around 15 minutes, and we use that information to uh, generate the scientific library in the next example. Once we finish processing data in the peptide mapping method, we get a table like this, and as you can see here, I have the two forms of the micer peptide. One is the unmodified form, and the second one is the oxidized form. And to create the scientific library, I'm using these two forms as an example. The scientific library creation is a one-step process. It's easy and simple. All you do is um, highlight these two forms of the peptide, right-click and select Send to Scientific Library option, and this automatically creates a scientific library. The thing to remember is that when it creates a scientific library, it stores all the detection information about these peptides, including the sequence, the modification levels, the retention times, the master charge ratios, the charge state information, as well as the um, fragmentation data. One of the key features of the scientific library is that it actually allows users to share these libraries between different user groups, between different systems, um, as well as it lets the user update the library over time as they gain more and more knowledge of the product. The next step of the streamlined workflow method is actually um, MAM data processing. For MAM data processing, we introduce our Peptide MAM application. Peptide MAM application has three key features, that is our system suitability analysis, the component tracking and relative quantitation, and new peak detection. To elaborate these key features more, I'm actually using the following samples. For system suitability tests, I've picked Waters Mass Prep Peptide Standard, and this is a nine peptide mix, and I've selected seven peptides eluding across the gradient to monitor my system readiness. For component tracking and relative quantitation, I've chosen two samples, Control and Stress Nismap Digest. Um, the stress NISMAP sample, I've actually prepared it by incubating the NISMAP protein at 40 degrees Celsius at pH 8 for 8 days, and both these samples were reduced, alkylated, and digested with trypsin. For new peak detection, I have four samples listed here derived from my control and stress NISMAP sample. The only difference is I prepared the spiked in control and spiked in stress sample by spiking in 15 heavy label quantitative peptides into each of these samples. I've started my MAM data processing by creating an analysis method in Peptide MAM application. And this analysis method has three different sections. 
The first one is the processing method. The second one is the link to data acquisition application. And the third one is the data review section. And in the processing method, I have listed my system suitability test peptides, the seven peptide that I've mentioned earlier in water's mass prep peptide mixture. And the second is the peptide attribute list. And I've actually imported these peptide attribute lists directly from the scientific library, and this is an easy one-step process. Third is the processing criteria, and the fourth is the peptide peak detection criteria. The processing criteria actually has limits for mass tolerance as well as retention time tolerance. And in new peak detection criteria, we have the new peak detection filter. In acquire and process, um, we have an embedded link that leads the user to sample submission application for data acquisition. Once I select acquire and process in my peptide MAM analysis method, it leads me to sample submission application and sample submission application is where I write my injection list or the sample list for data acquisition. This transition from peptide MAM application to sample submission application is seamless and easy, and it's also, again, a one-step process. In the sample submission application, I have my sample names or the injection names. I have an item description and item type. There are three item types that you can select from a drop-down menu. They are system suitability, blank, and unknown, and unknown are your analytical samples. In the sample submission app, we also list our instrument system that is currently online, as well as we list our optimized um, acquisition method. The two key features that I want to highlight here is the selection of the new peak detection reference, as well as the retention time alignment that's very important in our peptide MAM data processing. Right after data acquisition, Peptide MAM application immediately begins data processing. And the first part of the data set to process is the system suitability injections. And I have six system suitability injections listed in my um, sample list. That is um, three injections at the beginning and three injections uh, following my analytical samples. And I determine my system readiness based on the system suitability injections using four criteria. And these four criteria are mass error, retention time, chromatographic peak width, and MS intensity. And as an example, I've actually listed the data for mass error here. The software is actually capable of um, giving you a graphical review of all system suitability injections across your sample set um, for mass error. So I have three injections listed at the front and three injections listed at the end of the um, sample list. After reviewing the graphical summary, if I need to take a deep dive into system suitability data, I can do so in the review panel, and I can do it one injection at a time. So as you can see here, I have the chromatograms and also the data um, listed below in a table. In the chromatogram, I have the seven peptides that I've selected to monitor during my system suitability um, test um, analysis. And um, I have the criteria reported for mass, um, peak width, retention time, as well as MS intensity um, in this table below. And each of these criteria are actually um, compared against the user-defined pass-fail criteria in my processing method. And if it's a pass, it's marked with a check mark. And if it's a fail, it's marked with a cross. The next step is peptide attribute monitoring and peptide attribute monitoring starts with a list of product quality attributes that we imported from the scientific library. Scientific library provides the sequence information, the modification status, neutral mass, retention time, as well as the charge state information that we require for um, attribute tracking and quantification. There is minimum uh, user intervention here and the user input is only needed in um, attribute naming and defining the thresholds for each of these quality attributes. In data review under peptide attribute monitoring, we can see a graphical representation of all selected peptide quality attributes. And each bar graph shows the percent relative abundance um, for a selected attribute across um, all injections. 
And I've selected three examples here. The first one is the mycepeptide oxidation, and this is the example we've discussed throughout this presentation. The second one is glycopeptide G0F, and the third one is the deamidation of my um, base peak peptide. In the example of the mycepeptide, um, on the left-hand panel, you can see that I have four samples listed, the two controls and the two stress map, uh, the two stress NISMAP samples. The two stress map, two stress NISMAP samples shows um, elevated levels of oxidation um, in the in the sample, and these are indicated in orange color um, as a result of uh, surpassing the predefined limits, and the predefined limits were defined in the processing method, and um, in this example, I've used 3% as my um, thresholding criteria for mycepeptide oxidation. Glycopeptide G0F didn't show any um, indication of any elevation or uh, decline in a percent modification levels. However, deamidation of my base peak peptide showed similar results to my um, mycepeptide oxidation. Um, just like in my mycepeptide, mycepeptide oxidation example, I've had um, elevated deamidation levels in my uh, stressed uh, NISMAP samples. Just like I've done in my um, system suitability analysis, I can also take a deep dive into these um, results and I can review the data one injection at a time, um, which is what I've shown in the table below. As you can see here, I've selected the stressed NISMAB injection for mycepeptide oxidation, and you can see the two forms of the mycepeptide oxidation, uh, oxidized and unmodified. And you have the relative responses uh, listed in the table, along with the uh, data, um, along with the um, observed mass, mass error, retention time, and charge state information. One of the things that I have to mention is that the, um, the data actually provided uh, very um, accurate results and also um, the data quality was high. And this is a result of two embedded features in the peptide MAM algorithm. And these features are actually automated and do not require any user interference. And I'm gonna discuss these two features in the next couple of slides. The first feature I would like to mention is the uh, retention time alignment, and this actually happens before the peak assignment. Um, as an example, I've picked the Miser peptide again, um, and it is the unmodified Miser peptide this time. So as you can see here, I have the um, chromatograms for uh, Miser peptide control and stress NISMAP samples before the alignment step and after the alignment step. The retention time offset uh, before the alignment was about 0.02 minutes, and after the alignment, this was corrected. And this actually helps, uh, this might not be important uh, for such a small retention time shift, but if you are processing data collected on different systems as at, or at different sites or by different users, um, this might be an important feature to have. And then this feature does not require any user involvement. This is uh, part of the automated processing um, embedded in the peptide MAM application. The next feature I would like to highlight is the uh, consistency of peak picking, and this occurs during co-detection of the peaks. The co-detection algorithm um, actually aligns all the analytical samples and detects the optimum number of isotopes to use for each user-defined charge states. And I've shown uh, mycepeptide, the unmodified mycepeptide, as an example here. For unmodified uh, mycepeptide, we have two abundant charge states, the plus one charge state and the plus two charge state for quantification. And the algorithm um, actually was able to consistently identify equal number of isotopes for each of the charge states. And um, as you can see in this figure, um, the algorithm used um, five isotopes for plus two charge state as well as uh, plus one charge state in this example. This process is completely automated and it did not require any um, user input for data processing. The next step in peptide MAM data review is new peak detection and new peak detection is being performed um, as a part of the MAM 
for a purity assessment. Um, during new peak detection, we compare the peaks in our analytical sample um, to a reference and determine um, any emerging new peaks or uh, peaks that are changing in the analytical sample. And we use new peak detection criteria for this. And to elaborate this further, I'm gonna use the um, next slide um, and the uh, test case data. In this case study for new peak detection, um, I have derived four samples um, from my um, control and stress NISMAP digest. Um, two of these samples were uh, prepared by spiking in 15 heavy labeled quantitative peptides into my control sample and my stress NISMAP digest. And this is to determine the accuracy of the uh, new peak detection algorithm. And the new peak detection criteria actually includes five uh, criteria and it's on the um, right hand panel here you can see fall change percent base peak the percent base peak is actually calculated relative to the peptide peak that has the highest ms response and we set the percent base peak level at 0.1 percent or above and um, the next one is the isotopic similarity this is very important in verifying the uh, peptide um, this is calculated relative to a peptide with a similar mass to charge ratio. And the next one is the mass tolerance or the retention time window. Um, and during this analysis, the user has the ability to include or exclude plus one charge peptides. And um, in this case study, we uh, decided to exclude any peptides with only plus one charge states. And as you can see here, the NPD data review reveals new peaks in different samples. The control sample without any spiked in peptide is the control for new peak detection. And I've compared the other three samples, the spiked in control, the stress NISMAP sample, and the spiked in NISMAP sample relative to my um, control NISMAP sample. In the spiked in control sample, I only have 15 spiked in peptide, and this was correctly indicated in the analysis, and the new peaks detected in the sample was um, 15. In the stress NISMAP sample, I've detected 27 new peaks, and most of these peaks were related to oxidation or deamidations um, of the uh, peptides. And these were pre-verified, so uh, we knew um, that these uh, peaks were correct. In my spiked in stress sample, we've detected 42 new peaks. Um, if we do the math, we'll see that we have, uh, in the stressed sample, we have 27 new peaks and we've spiked in 15 heavy labeled peptides into the spiked in stress sample. And that adds up to um, 42 new peaks um, theoretically. And this matched the um, observed uh, number of new peaks in this sample. And this actually validated that the performance of the new peak detection algorithm in uh, peptide MAM software. And to further verify, I've investigated the mass spectra for each of these peptides. And um, if I'm an authorized user, I do have the ability to accept or reject um, these new peaks at the end of the analysis. The final step of the um, peptide MAM um, streamline workflow method is the um, generation of the uh, MAM report. And this is an automated process. We do have a template um, given in the software. This template actually gives the user um, some flexibility to accept or reject certain sections of the reporting template. And the criteria that we can um, report in the template are on the um, left-hand panel here. This reports system suitability results, peptide attribute monitoring test results, um, and um, also the uh, new peak detection results, um, as I've shown here in the example. As promised at the beginning of the presentation, I'm actually dedicating the last part of my presentation to showcase the reproducibility of the peptide MAM workflow method. And as you can see here, I have used my stressed NISMAP digest sample as a sample for this case study. And I've acquired the data on three BioCord systems, the BioCord 1, the BioCord 2, and BioCord 3. All these, these three systems are identical in hardware and software platforms. 
and these data sets were acquired at different times using the same sample. And the data were processed independently in each experiment, and the, the final data sets were combined to uh, calculate the relative percent modification levels and the um, relative standard deviation. The bar chart here summarizes the results for our reproducibility study using the um, stressness map sample that was acquired on BioCord 1, 2, and 3. And in this case study, we've monitored 10 peptide quality attributes for the NISMAP protein, and these included six glycopeptides, our mysopeptides, our oxidized mysopeptide, our base peak peptide, and our modified base peak peptide. The modification um, we observed for the base peak peptide was a deamidation. As you can see here, we have the average person modification levels for all 10 peptide attributes we monitored in the analysis, and the highest percent relative standard deviation uh, was seen for glycopeptide MAN5, which was around 9.9%. And this glycopeptide MAN5 was the lowest abundant peptide that we monitored in the analysis, and the uh, relative abundance of this peptide was 0.1 to 0.2% in intensity compared to our base peak peptide. Overall, the relative standard deviation was maintained less than 10% during the analysis for all peptide quality attributes uh, monitored in this analysis. In summary, the BioCord system is a smart MSLCMS system with auto tuning and calibration capability. And when you combine these auto tuning parameters with generic source settings, it provides optimum conditions for peptide attribute monitoring. The streamlined workflow method for MAM contains peptide MAM for data processing, and this has three modules system suitability analysis, peptide attribute monitoring, and new peak detection for data processing. The data acquired on multiple biocode systems at different time points and processed using the streamlined workflow method shows the robustness of the complete workflow solution. And overall, the platform solution with the BioCourt Waters Connect provides an end-to-end -end solution um, suitable for early to late stage development and QC uh, laboratory settings. The streamlined workflow method that we've discussed here today is nothing but a product of teamwork here at Waters Corporation. So I would like to thank all the teams that were involved in the process, the scientific operations biofarm team in the USA, the nonlinear development team in the UK, MS Evaluation Lab in the UK, marketing, product management and development teams, um, and um, everybody who are not listed here today. And thank you all of you for listening. Thank you very much, Nalini. Well, thank you. All right. So I'm uh, pleased to introduce Dr. Barbara Sullivan. Barbara is currently the biopharmaceutical group leader in our mass spectrometry demo lab. The application area of expertise includes biomolecule characterization. She has been at Waters for 13 years. Prior to working at Waters, she worked on various biomolecule applications at Novartis in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And I will now turn it over to Barbara. Okay, thank you very much, Bobby. So Nalini did a very nice job introducing the features of the BioCord and the MAM software. What I'm gonna take the next couple of minutes to do is actually go into the software and kind of reiterate the capability she showed you. Um, so just to recap the experiment, Nalini has done, like she mentioned, she's been working on this for um, about two years now. She's generated numerous data sets to test the reproducibility. Um, and she's generated a data set for us to show, um, to demo the so software as well, to be able to completely show each of the um, capabilities of the software. So just to recap, for the system suitability area, we're using a mass prep peptide mix. Now a user can choose any peptide mix they want. The idea is to just choose a number of peptides that scan the, um, the retention time range of your study. And then you're just, you're gonna qual um, qualify each of these peptides based on the criteria that Nalini mentioned, reten accuracy, mass accuracy, retention time, um, intensity, and peak width. 
So you could choose any, any peptide mix, but in this case, we're using the Waters Mass Prep. And then for component and tracking, what we did was we stressed a sample so that we could pick attributes and, and show the different levels. So it was stressed at 40 degrees, eight days, BHA, and tryptic digest. And then for purity assessment, the new peak. So to be able to look uh, mainly to know that we've identified correctly those new peaks, we spiked in peptides into a control. So that's the only, the only extra things we should see in there is the 15 peptides. And, um, and that way we're able to um, fine tune the criteria for unknown samples. Okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing this and go into the software. So this is the um, Peptide MAM software. So you can see it's, it's pretty simple interface. On the left-hand side is your analysis where you create an analysis. You can browse for different studies. On the right-hand side is where you create a processing method. And then when, and I'll walk through each of these with you. So the first step is to create a processing method. So if I open a method, you can see it's, it's pre pretty clean. It, on the left-hand side, it just walks you through what you have to do from the for the method. Define the attributes, define your system suitability standards, and set the processing parameters. So the first step would be to define your attributes. There's two ways of doing this. The easiest and most streamlined way, is, as Melanie mentioned, is to import from the scientific library. So if you've done a peptide map run, you can quickly um, send those peptides that you're gonna do routine monitoring, critical quality attribute peptides, that you are gonna routinely monitor to the scientific library so they can access them in, in the app here and um, just start your um, attribute monitoring. So that's the easiest way. It's just, you could input, just select the peptides from the library that you wanna monitor in this study or select them all. The other way is you can um, import them from a CSV file. So again, the CSV file will have, again, you can, um, oops, sorry about that. So you can um, import them from CSV file. So we'll have the peptide sequence, the modification, and the retention time. Then what you would do is you would pick an unmodified and a modified form of the peptide and you would say, um, create attribute. Um, typically what I do is I just um, copy the, you can, you can name it anything. I just copy the sequence so I can define it. And then you can just do ox M so you can follow it. And you're usually gonna monitor the uh, modified form. So you're gonna check that it says which one to modify. And then you're gonna define acceptable limits. You can do less than, greater than, or between certain values. So in this case, I'll just say um, less than 1%. And then you can say create. Now you'll see at the bottom half of the screen, that attribute has been created. The acceptable limits is there. You can edit it and, and remove it at any time. And then you'd go through that process for, for each of those attributes that you want to monitor in this, in this study and create the lim limits. So once that, once that is all set up, then you would go move on to your system suitability test. The way to get the system suitability peptides in is to import them through a CSV file. In this case, it's the mass prep um, peptides. So I have seven here. Again, it's the sequence. The neutral mass will come from the sequence. And from the CSV file, the thing that the user would put in is the pass field criteria for peak width and intensity. So you do a minimum and a max for peak width and intensity for that you would designate as um, pass field criteria. The mass accuracy and retention time tolerances will come from the next step where you set your processing parameters. So now you've defined your attributes, you've defined your system suitability standards, and then you move to the next step, which you see on the left-hand side, which is setting your processing parameters. So here's, like I mentioned, where you put your mass tolerance. So for the bioaccord, everything should be under 10 ppm. Retention time tolerance would be about 0.5 minutes. 
Here is where you would check whether to ignore ions in the beginning or at the end of the run. This would be, for instance, if you were doing a wash in the beginning and at the end, you can just save some processing time where you're just cleaning the column. You don't want to process that data. In this case, we, we didn't check that. And on the left-hand side is the new criteria that um, the linearity went through. But you, these are the defaults here, but the user can set, set it up to, to run with the defaults here. But even when the process results, they can change any of these um, criteria and reprocess the data. If they wanna be more stringent or, or, or less stringent, they can do that. And here is where you would exclude the plus ones, okay? So it's very simple, very straightforward. It wa walks you through step-by-step step how you have to set up your processing method. So then you just save your method. And then you go going to set up your, your, your study. So here you would just select the method, the processing method that you just created. And then now you're gonna bring in, in your, your samples for processing. And so um, the two things that you would have to define here is the retention time alignment reference, which is usually we pick something towards the, the end of the run and something that has a, a lot more features in it, particularly a, maybe a stress sample. And then you're gonna pick your retention time alignment reference and that's usually the control. And this, this is the really nice thing about the software, the code detection and the retention time alignment is really key in um, making sure you identify every feature in the data and accurately measure it. Um, the retention time, it's good to mention that the retention time alignment is done non-linear across the run, which is key because um, peptides may tend to drift more towards the end of a gradient than it does in the beginning. So that, that's, that's another key feature to make sure that everything is, is gonna be accurate. So once you define your new peak detection reference and your retention time alignment, then you just go to the next step and it will process your data. Once your data is, it, oh, and I should just mention that um, when you bring over all your raw files or define all your raw files, the type is blank system suitability. So it knows when it's, when it's presenting the data, what, what the sample is or unknown. Then once you, you, your data is processed, then you review your results. So the first thing to do is um, review your system suitability. So the system suitability gives you the view as a graphical view, view and, and then a chromatogram view. So as we mentioned, there's the four criteria. So this is gonna show you by trend plots, how well you match that criteria and, and, and if there's any outliers that you need to attend to um, that could affect the quality of your study. So you can see every, there are no real outliers. Each of, each of the, the dots are in the color is a peptide. And you can see the three, pep, three runs were done at the beginning of the run and three were at the end of the run. That's why there's, there's no um, system suitabilities in the mid, middle of the run, but certainly um, a user can do as many as they want in any place of the study they want to do to show the robustness of the study. Um, so you can see mass accuracy was between 0.1 and 7 ppm for all the peptides. And there was tight tolerance for retention time, um, the intensities, were, were, were really tight as well as the peak width. So this indicated that um, the system was performing the, the system suitability peptides that you defined, at, uh, defined as your standard um, all match your criteria and you, you can be confident in the, the results of the study. That same data, you, you can look at um, the peptides across the chromatogram. So you can see this, this mix that we picked spanned um, pe a peptide early in the gradient all, all the way out towards the end of the gradient. So it was a good system suitability pick. And they ha also have different intensities as well. So the view, you can either use, look at the TIC, the base peak or the TUV trace. You can also um, pin your chromatograms and, and look at um, the, the reproducibility of runs. Um, if I pin all these systems to abilities, you can see how nicely they overlay. You can look at that. And then as well as the table below. So it's gonna show you what, if anything passed or failed. In this case, everything passed, so it's a green check mark, but it will be red and highlighted red. And, and as you scroll across, if it failed, it will show you which criteria it failed because you're, you're listing all the criteria here, mass error, retention time, um, intensity and peak width. So it will highlight directly wh wh which criteria it, it did not match. And then and the user can um, 
take intervention there. The next step after looking at your system suitability is your injections. So this study was um, replicates of controls and unknowns. And so here, what you're doing is you can quickly visually see that you're one, that your blanks are truly blank. Um, and then um, walk through your injections, looking at your system suitability, just quickly looking to see if in the runs there's any outliers as anything went wrong. So you just you basically visually just looking, looking at your runs. And here too, if you're doing it in replicates, you can also pin them here and do the overlay like I just showed you with the system suitability. Again, you have the ability to look at the, T the TIC, total ion chromatogram, the base peak intensity, and as well as the TUV traces. And then moving on to retention time alignment. Again, like we mentioned, it's just, this is a critical step for, for getting um, the accuracy and the measurements um, reproducible and accurate every time. So what you can see is you, you, choose, you chose a um, sample for, for your retention time alignment. And, and then um, that, that would, that I chose as an unknown sample. Um, and, then, and, and then here I'm clicking on the control. So the top panel is showing you before retention time and the bottom panel is showing you um, after retention time. So if I just zoom in to a part of the chromatogram, you can kind of see that the, at least here in, in this run, there's not that much drift. Um, so it's after alignment, it's, it really brings, brings it in um, much nicer. But you can imagine if, if I go to the samples, see there might be some samples later in the run that drift a little bit more. So it's, it's nice to have that. So um, this, this gives you the confidence that um, before it does the peak detection or the peak measurement, everything is, uh, is um, aligned. And again, going down the left-hand side um, and walking through the workflow, the next step is to monitoring attributes. So what you have is, is two ways of viewing the data. This, um, chart view up here, table view on the bottom. So you can um, quickly visualize by looking at each of the attributes. So each, these are each of the peptides that we set up in the beginning to monitor. And what, what it's showing you is, is the dashed line is that limit that you set when you define the limit. So when I put less than 1%, that dashed line represents what you defined. So it's quickly gonna show you um, for this peptide, which runs were above the limit, not only above the line, but also a different color and it's, it, as well as a warning symbol. So the, there's no missing that um, there's some things that are outliers. So it's gonna do that for each, each of the attributes that you defined, as well as that same data is represented down here in the table. So you can see it by attribute, it will say which sample it came from, which unknown or control, percent modified, the acceptable range you defined and how much outside that range it was and the modified intensity, and as well as being able to click on any, any one of the injections and then just view injection as well, where you'll see the extracted ion chromatogram as well as the, um, the charge states that it, it observed. So you can, you can either double click on the table or click here to, to go in and, and view any injections um, that you want to, to investigate further. All this data can be export, uh, export the attribute measurements can be exported. Um, so you can um, do more with the data in, in some other format if you want, if you wish. So here I'm reviewing um, the, the attributes by attribute but you could also review the, the tables by sample. So for each sample, it's showing all the different attributes and, and any outliers. Um, and so you can, you can do it either way, whichever, whichever the way you like to view the data. And then finally, if you're doing purity assessment, um, you also have the ability for new peak detection. So as, as we mentioned in the beginning, that one we um, spiked in 12 and um, 15 peptides into a control. So that should be the only difference. And you can see, we can see those 15 peptides here. So that gives us good confidence that the parameters that we use um, was able to identify that in a control sample. So we can feel confident that the, um, the new peaks that we're, we're detecting um, are, fall within that criteria. 
but but if you if you want to be more stringent or less stringent for that as, you, as you're looking at those new peaks you can change it here as well and then just change one of the criteria and just say save and it will just reprocess that that piece and, sh and show you the, the new matches and as as well you can go once you've defined what your what your new peaks are you can um, review so you you here you'll see the the extracted ion chromatogram and and you'll see the mass spectrum so if it's if it's really you also have the criteria and it, it's going to these are high confidence here but it, as you're getting closer to the tolerances it might be a little scratchy and you and you don't think it's really a um, a new peak detection so you're able to um, reject that. But in this case, it's, it's definitely a huge fold change. It, it, the mass spectra looks nice. There's no doubt that that's a peptide. There's no doubt that's, that's pretty intense. In this case, you would confirm that as a new peak. And you would go back and, and do that for, for each of the new peaks that, you, um, that, that showed up in your um, unknown samples. And then finally, the report. So there's different cri report criteria that you can select. If you only want to show the system su suitability, you can just show that report or just show everything checked here. In later versions of the software, we're gonna, as each version of the software comes out, um, we'll, we'll be adding new capabilities and new, new reporting functionality. But in this case, I'll just um, choose one. I'll just show the monitored attributes and then say generate report. Once it's finished generating a report, I can open it. So here I just said, I just wanted to see my attributes. So it's just gonna um, report that. So here it's showing you um, all the defined attributes, whether it was monitored or not, the um, retention time. Um, it just shows you all the, all the data for that. Okay. All right. So I think that, as you can see on the left hand side, that walked us through the software, each step of the software, um, showing, showing the results. And we certainly would like to thank you for attending today's presentation. We hope that um, you found it informative. <laughs>